Welcome to the Revolution 11 video series, Creating a Cloud Account and Hooking Up a Smart Thing, the Google Cloud Edition. Part 3, Adding Beacons to Google's Beacon Dashboard with the Proximity API. Hi, this is Jim from Revolution 11. I'll be walking you through today's demo. Before we get started, make sure you've set up a beacon with the Eddystone protocol. We have a video on how to do that on this channel. You'll also want to make sure to have the latitude and longitude of where you are placing your beacon handy. To do that, open up Google Maps and find your current location. Right-click on the location on the map and choose What's Here. You will get a pop-up containing the latitude and longitude. Make note of them. We're also going to be using Google's Place ID in case we want to use these beacons with the Places API. To determine the Place ID for your location, go to this URL, find your location on the map there, and the Place ID will show up. Now that we've gathered up everything we need, let's get to work. This URL will open up the Proximity API page in the Google Developer Council. Log in as the root user and press the Enable button for the Proximity Beacon API. Once the API setup is complete, you will land on the Manage API page. You'll see that we need to create credentials. Click on Credentials in the menu bar to the left. On the Credentials homepage, we'll start by configuring the Consent screen that pops up when this API is called. Press the Configure Consent Screen button to the right. We're going to do a minimum configuration to get us going. We'll name our app Beacon App and upload an icon for it to use for the application logo. Scroll down and press the Save button in the lower right-hand corner. On the next screen, click on the Create Credentials button and choose OAuth Client ID. Select Web Application and press the Create button in the lower left-hand corner. Name the credentials and paste in this URL for Google's OAuth Playground so that we can test adding beacons to the beacon dashboard. Press the Create button in the lower left-hand corner. You should get a pop-up, but the client ID will be using in the OAuth Playground. Click OK to dismiss it. Open Google's OAuth Playground in a new browser window with this URL. Click the gear icon in the top right hand corner and change the OAuth flow to client side. Check the use your own OAuth credentials checkbox and paste the client ID you generated in the previous step into the box and then click on close. On the left side, in the Input Your Own Scopes text field, paste the following and press the Authorize APIs button. A pop-up will appear asking you to choose an account to use with the Playground. You will be asked to give permission to view and modify the beacons. Click Allow. Next, you'll be asked to confirm your choices. Press the Allow button in the lower right hand corner. Before we can add our beacon with the proximity API using the Google OAuth Playground, we need to come up with something called an advertising ID. This is made with a packing function that uses the namespace and instance that the beacon is using. There are a lot of ways to do this within an app, but since we are using the Google OAuth Playground, and we're working with a Mac, we can do this quickly 
and the terminal application with Ruby. So open up the terminal application from Apps, Utilities, and fire up the Ruby application by typing in IRB and then hitting Return. Paste in the following with your namespace and instance and hit return. We will use the result for the advertising ID with the proximity API. Now that we have our advertising ID, let's return to the OAuth playground and set up our request so we can add a beacon using the proximity API. For HTTP method, pick post. For request URI, enter the following URL. Press Enter Request Body to set up the body of the request. Here is an example you can paste in. You can see where to paste in the advertising ID you generated earlier. Uh, you can see where you paste in the place ID you generated earlier. Here's the spot for the latitude and longitude you collected earlier. The Places API supports floors for indoor mapping, so we're going to set the name of the indoor level to 1. You can add a description of the beacons here, and in Properties, you can add any key value pairs you wish. We are starting with a key of position and a value of entryway. Press close in the lower left of the pop-up. Press the send the request button. You should see a success message that looks something like this. Now let's open up the beacon dashboard with this URL and see if our beacon is there. Since this is the first time we've used the dashboard, we'll see this pop-up. Press the Start button. The app will ask for access permission. Press Allow in the lower right-hand corner. Choose the project that you tied your beacon to, and you will come to a summary page of the beacons connected to that project. We can drill down into the details of our beacon. Here's a demo of a project with a few more beacons to give you a better idea about how to manage your beacons with the dashboard. You can toggle between attributes that you have assigned to your beacons here. You can filter the values of those attributes here. Click on the pencil icon in the upper right to edit the attributes of your beacons. Scroll down on the edit screen and you can see where you could add new key value pairs of attributes for this beacon. So hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of using the proximity API to add beacons to the dashboard. Your this concludes part three of creating a cloud account and hooking up a smart thing, the Google Cloud Edition. Next time on Creating a Cloud Account and Hooking Up a Smart Thing, Part 4, Setting Up Multi-Factor Authentication for the Root User. See you then! Do you need help getting started with the cloud or IoT? Contact Revolution 11. We'd love to chat.